Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany and thanks for watching. Um, today I decided that I was going to go ahead and jump on the bunny train and show everybody how I have been um, embroidering the Easter bunnies. I open up the ear versus sewing through both layers of the ear. As you can see here, um, I embroider on the inside. This is what it looks like on the back and this is the back fur piece. Um, so the point of this video is just going to show you guys how you open them up. Um, to go ahead and embroider it this way all right so as you can see here all I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to stretch the fabric um, so that I can get gain access to the inner threads um, so I'm just trying to show you guys here I don't know if you can really see it that great on this camera but that's where the threads are and that's where I'm gonna take my seam ripper and pop those stitches loose So I will say that I have noticed um, through Facebook, um, different embroidery groups, people that have been taking the ear apart, they only take off one side of the ear, which is fine. You can definitely do that. Um, you just, you're going to have to pin it a lot better than what I'm going to be showing you. Um, but for me, I prefer to take um, as much of the ear apart as I can. It makes it a lot easier to hoop. Um, for those of you that are new, um, I do only have a single needle embroidery machine, so it kind of limits how it limits how I can place the ear on here um, without you know being worried about it getting caught underneath um, I can just you know put it on the machine and go versus when I'm making shirts I have to sit there and babysit it so to make life easier for me so that I can be taking the ears apart of all the other bunnies that I have going I like to take it completely off um, when I say completely off I'm going to be taking I'm going to be going all the way around the ear um, so that I have a opening kind of like a, um, I guess like you would open a book. I will have two pieces and then I can just tuck the fur side um, underneath the bunny while the, um, I don't, I don't know what this, what kind of fabric this would be. Maybe like a, I don't want to say flannel, but it is what it is. Whatever kind of fabric it is on the inside, um, that's what I'm going to be pinning to the hoop and just having that accessible without you know the first minky side being in the way makes it a lot easier okay and now I'm just trying to show you guys uh, another way to try and um, take out the stitching if you just make a little hole flip it inside out you have access to see the top and bottom stitching um, you can take it apart this way if you are concerned about um, actually you know tearing the fabric just going in there ham like I did just tearing it through um, so yeah you can always just make a little hole flip it inside out and then continue to remove the stitches that way so you had me bite through the bullet I won't play a second fiddle with you you look away just when they pull it you gotta step up yeah you mean Still I get nothing honest from ya 
Alright ladies and gents, now here comes the fun part. So I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop um, to embroider with. Um, so you can actually use whatever size you want. If you want, like, you know, say the, the kid's name is longer. If you have a bigger hoop, use a bigger hoop. Um, more, the bigger hoop that you have, the easier it is. You can do two names at once. Um, but I just have this 5x7 hoop, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to be using um, this pre-cut tearaway stabilizer. Um, I will link that down in the description. Right now I can't remember what size it is. I want to say 8x8 but I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, so tearaway stabilizer. Um, I'm also going to be using some um, temporary adhesive um, and pens of course. So yeah, I'm just going to hoop my stabilizer. I'm going to use my t-shirt grid um, to mark the top and the center uh, notch just so that I can line it up and um, get my ear on there correctly. Just some quick important tips to remember is that temporary adhesive gets tacky really quickly and dries really quickly. So, you know, you kind of got to get this ear on there before you have to spray it all over again. The other thing is this fabric, because it was already sewn to the ear, it does roll easy. So, um... I'm doing a lot of pulling and pushing trying to get all the creases um, out and make sure that my fabric does not roll underneath um, because as you can see here it does do that a lot. Alignment is pretty much up to you. If the name is short or for instance um, I'm just embroidering 2022 on this ear so I'm just trying to you know make sure that I have have it as center as possible. Um, I'm also going to be doing some alignment on my embroidery machine, make sure that it stitches where I want it to. Um, but again, how far the edge of the ear hangs off of the hoop depends on how big the child's name is. So um, I don't really have any like, oh, it has to be this far, this many inches off the hoop. It all depends on how long of a name you're embroidering on. Um, I just put a couple of pins in just on the areas where I know that it has the potential to lift which is mostly the areas that is closest to the bunny and then the areas that are prone to rolling up underneath or um, don't actually have a lot of the head adhesive um, spray on there so it's just the very edges of where it was already pre-sewn and then um, the, cl the very tip of the ear and then um, the very the end that's closest to the bunny itself. I hear you breathe, but I can't see If you're right here next to me Something's wrong, wasn't it fun? Is it now we're done? Alright, so the last thing that you want to do before you put this on the machine and get to stitching is you want to use some water stabilizer, water soluble stabilizer or WSS, which everybody likes to abbreviate 
it as um, this one I got from Amazon it's not my favorite but it's what they had available um, it's easy to tell which side goes where um, as you can see I'm trying to show you here um, the rough side goes down on the fabric it helps it stay on top of the fabric and not slip and slide everywhere and then the top side is the smooth you don't have to pin this down um, you're just gonna pop that on top put it on your machine um, you know do your alignment and then let it go it helps keep your stitches from sinking in this type of fabric so it doesn't matter whether you're not stitching that much or whatever it is anytime you're stitching with anything that resembles minky you want to use water soluble stabilizer on top so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let this one embroider and then I'm gonna go and get the other one I'm gonna show you how to pin it back together to sew it up all right all right, so here we are with one that has finished embroidering on both ears. Um, here's the side with the name, and then I also have the side with the 2022. So, pinning it back together is actually really simple. Um, I say this a lot anytime I'm working with this type of material. If you are using, if you have ever sewn anything with minky and flannel, um, burp cloths, baby bibs, blankets, you name it, whatever it is, you're gonna the how you pin those pieces together is exactly how you're gonna pin these two ears back together so the easiest thing to do is you are actually just going to flip it inside out um, you definitely want to stretch it as well just so that you um, can make sure that the fabrics align back together the way that you un unstitch them um, I recommend pinning the top two pieces together that way you it's easier to um, even it out around the ear um, <laughs> Minky fur, faux fur Minky is like the worst in the world it is super slippery stretchy it goes all over the place so you can either use clips or you can use pins for this because I want to make sure that I get all my pieces back together I'm going to pin mine so you're just gonna start from the the part that that is still stitched together and then you're just gonna pin all the way around the ear making sure that you are stretching the fabric together um, just because it, it easily bunches up so yeah just pin all the way around the ear it's flipped uh, backwards make sure that the the two sides that are supposed to be on the outside are facing each other Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this part right here. This is the other side of the ear. Um, this is where we are going to be leaving our opening. You're gonna, you want to make sure that you stretch this piece as far over as you can, um, because it, it doesn't. I don't know why, but it doesn't line up really well if you do not. And when I say line up very well, I mean when you flip it inside out to close it all the way up. Um, there's some gathering like it, it kind of is bulky um, so for this and you want to make sure sorry I didn't mean to get it out of the camera I'm just it, this table's really small I'm moving so I'm limited on space but you <laughs> you want to pull that side all, as far over as you can just keep stretching it keep pulling it and you want to leave about two fingers width um, I have fat fingers so two fingers for me is like the perfect amount but two fingers width um, of a gap so you want to pin all the way over to those two fingers um, that is where you are going to stop sewing and then be able to flip your the ear inside out and then stitch it all the way close I miss you so much I 
All right, and so here's just what the back looks like after it's been pinned. If you can notice here, this one is, I stretched it very well so that this one's gonna be easier to close up on the end. Um, the other ear, I didn't uh, stretch as well, so I know that one's gonna be difficult when I'm closing it up. That one's gonna pucker a little bit. Um, so yeah, so when I say stretch your fabric and make sure it all fits in there, that's what I want. That's what I mean. I, you know, you want the smooth back. You don't want any bunching. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for pinning it. So let's go ahead and head over to the sewing machine. And I'll show you how to stitch it back up. Okay, so um, I just wanted to show you guys here. Uh, this is a walking foot. Um, if you've never worked with um, thicker fabrics before, a walking foot is highly recommended. It makes it easier um, to sew thicker layers. Um, normally I would have this on my machine, but I have two tutus to do, so I'm just gonna use my regular foot. Um, but if you don't have a walking foot and you plan on sewing baby blankets in the future, I definitely recommend getting one. It'll make your life easier. But let's go ahead and get started on sewing the ears up. Um, so um, I'm just gonna start here uh, where um, there's still some of the previous uh, stitching and um, I'm just going to back stitch over the previous um, stitching and then I'm gonna sew all the way around the ear up until I get to the point of where um, my the hole is the two finger width hole is for me to flip the ears inside out um, I'm just gonna be sewing along the same line that was originally stitched down and then I'm going to be uh, pulling pulling the ear as much as I can stretching it out um, just so that I can have a smoother finish Take me to your heart, take me to your soul, never drawn apart, cause I belong, I belong to you, be my guiding star, cause I need your love and baby, and never let me down, let me down, let me down, I'm your song. Alright, so once you finish sewing that up and you have flipped your ear inside out, you're just going to um, align the little gap to be sewn closed. Um, you could definitely hand sew it with a, a large needle if you want to, but baby, I don't want to do that. That's not, that's not my cup of tea. I do not like hand sewing stuff if I don't have to. So I am just going to sew mine with the, ma with the machine as close to the edge as I can get it. Um, it's personal preference how you want to do that. Let me hear you say I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh-huh. Come on. Now slide, slide, slide to the bar. Shine, shine, 
that you have gotten the both layers of the fabric inside tucked in um, and you're pretty much done you just gotta do the other ear and you are good to go um, again how you close it up at the very end is personal preference I just like to do it this way um, if you like want to put your own little label on there to cover up the stitching you can do that as well um, but these ones are just made for family and um, yeah so that's pretty much it for this video um, the next one is I actually made cute little outfits for my bunnies so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that if you want to make um, a dress and a hair bow for the girls and a little vet a matching vest for the boys um, so stay tuned for that um, if you enjoyed this content if it was helpful please give this video a thumbs up to let YouTube know that um, you know my videos are interesting so that they can so that they can recommend my videos to more people like you. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And I hope you guys have a blessed day or night whenever you're watching this video. Thanks so much. Peace out.